doesn't even make any sense. How porcupine speed doesn't even make that's a fast porcupine. The velocity of a porcupine is modeled by x cubed plus 2x plus 1 miles per hour. How far does the porcupine travel in the first three hours? Well, you simply integrate the function on interval 0 to 3, and you therefore get 32.25 miles. Welcome to this week's episode of Laker Nation. My name is Wyatt Pelness. And I'm Wyatt Dieterman. We have another winner for our contest question. Lily DeBoer answered correctly, with the headless host being Emma Stender. Congratulations, Lily. By the way, our prize will be changing each week, so keep your guesses coming. You never know what you could win. Like a car? Um, no, probably not. Really, in our budget, so, but some really cool stuff. The contest question for this week is, in what year did Winstead get added to the district going from just Howard Lake Waverly to Howard Lake Waverly Winstead? Please send your answers to our email at klkr at hlwwschools.org or put a comment on our YouTube channel or our Facebook page. We now head over to our special correspondent, Billy Hucker, who is letting us know about a little about Movember. Billy? Thanks, I'm Billy Hucker, an 8th grader this year. Today I will be talking about Movember. Movember is when men and women, yes, girls participate too, do not shave for the whole month to promote men's health and to raise money for prostate cancers, testicular cancers, and for poor mental health. For example, Zach here has a perfect example of what to do this month. Movember started in 2003 in Australia when Travis Gr Garone and Luke Slattery decided to bring back an old-fashioned trend and the two friends decided to add a cause behind it. When Movember started, they had zero dollars raised and only 30 members. Now in 2015, they have raised over 649 million and have a, over four and a half million Mo Bros and Mo Sistas. Even some stations participate like WCCO. I strongly encourage all who can participate to be a Mo Bro or a Mo Sista in this great cause for men's health. You can groom your facial hair, but do not shave it. Now back to you, Wyatt and Wyatt. What a sensational report, Billy. This week, we begin our spotlight on our Teacher of the Month. We go out to Zach for the coverage. It's time for HLWW's least favorite game show, Name That Teacher. <laughs> this teacher can bench more than the average human weighs, is always dressing in his suit and tie. And do you think you can talk in his class? No! Find out who it is after the break. Who's that? Teacher. I hope it was worth it. For that chocolatey coated ice cream loaded, big and thick, no room for stick. Mr. Montgomery. Mr. Montgomery, thank you for taking time to be Teacher of the Month. Well, thank you. What is your teaching position in the school? I am a high school social studies teacher, but I teach mainly history classes. What kind of histories do you teach? I teach U.S. history and world history, and then I have a section of modern U.S. history where I teach from the civil rights era protest movement up to modern day. Okay. 
your favorite topic in history to learn yourself? From an American history point of view, I would have to say probably the civil rights era, 1960s Vietnam. From a world history point of view, I believe it's anywhere from the Middle Ages through the Renaissance and the Reformation. What is your favorite thing about teaching in general? I enjoy being in front of students. I enjoy watching the students uh, figure things out uh, when sometimes the light goes on inside of their heads and they start to make the application of what happened in the past is still relevant today. Uh, that I also have to say is probably the biggest challenge to teaching, mm -hmm. especially the content that I teach, trying to make what happened in the past relevant. Uh, but doing that also brings me the greatest joy when students can see that connection. Mm -hmm. Is learning world history applicable in today's students? Mm. That's the biggest challenge, yes. Uh, I believe it is uh, because of the fact that so many events that happen in the world today are a direct result of things that have happened in the past, especially world events. Uh, and religion is the key, I really think that. Uh, my challenge in world history is to A, teach people that, that uh, these ancient civilizations or older civilizations revolved around a religion, that, that uh, the religion is embedded into their culture. Anything that goes on in the Middle East, all the wars that are going on in Afghanistan and Iraq, most of them have religious connotations. Uh, so yeah, I do think that it's very applicable, but the challenge is for me to get the students to realize where the application mm -hmm. comes in. I got a couple surprise questions for I you. I believe that. All right. First one, general knowledge question. Do you know what play Mr. Lincoln was watching the day he got assassinated? Our American Cousin. It's too easy. I knew it was too easy, <laughs> but I wish he would have saw the end of it because it was probably good. I, it probably was good, yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. On a scale of one to death, how scared are your students of meeting you the first day of school? My sophomore students are way more afraid than my junior students. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know if I can put that on a scale. Uh, it depends on how well they know me or how well I know them. Yeah. And uh, Most of the students that know my children uh, probably aren't that afraid of me. Mm -hmm. uh, but before my children got up here, yeah, I think there was a definite, very near-death experience for <laughs> many of them. I would assume so. <laughs> All right. Thank you for giving me some time. Thank you. Thanks, Nate. This week in Laker News, end of the quarter is Friday, November 6th. Make sure all your homework is in and all your tests are taken. Your reward, no school Monday, November 9th. Winter sports are ramping up. If you are interested in becoming involved in any of the HLWW offering for the fall, please see Katie Heber in the high school office for more information or to sign up. Our fall offerings are boys basketball, girls basketball, gymnastics, wrestling, knowledge bowl, speech, the one act play, and of course our very own KLKR Broadcasting Club. Which you're obviously going to pick for your winter activity. Because it's like the best club you could join. Yeah. Congratulations to our HLWW National FFA Quiz CDE team. They took third place in nationals. Team members included Kylie Sherrod, Jenna Benson, Jordan Tudhagen, and Savannah Weber. Good job, ladies. In sports this week. In football, Lakers had a fantastic win against Maple Lake at St. John's University, making them the Section 4AA champions. This is the first time in a very long time that we took a win against them. With this win, they advanced to the state high school quarterfinals. Were you at the game? No, I wasn't, but I heard it was really good. I'm happy that we won and finally beat them. Yeah, I mean, we've never actually like beat Maple Lake in like so long. But on the contrary, our volleyball team has won their first subsection game against Breck and also moved on. Great job. Cross Country competed in their CMC meet in Piers. Connor Schonk took first, Lauren Steven took third, and the boys took fourth as a team. Gwen Helgeson took third for the girls, and the girls' team took fourth overall. Great job, teams. Now, me and Wyatt are going to go out and give some advice about some important tips on job interviewing. So let's talk about what you should and should not do before, during, and after a job interview. Oh. Here for my six o'clock. Do not walk in late or even just on time. Arrive early so you are not rushing through the door and you have time to prepare yourself. Oh, hello. Hi, I'm here for my 6.30 appointment. 
So why do you want this job? Well, you know, dog, all I want this job for is just a little side cash on the side, you know? Do not talk like a gangster. Yo, dog, is not going to give you the job no matter how many times you say, come on, man. So why do you want this job? Well, you know, growing up as a kid, I always respected and thought of my teachers as role models. What is your greatest weakness? Can you specify that question? I, I got a lot. You know, I'm fat, overweight, my wife left me for my boss at McDonald's. Almost all interviews will contain the question, what's your greatest weakness? Don't degrade yourself. Instead, change your downsides and make them positive and talk about how that could benefit the company. So what is your greatest weakness, would you say? Well, the thing is, my last boss at my last job, well, he just kind of said I'm too hard of worker sometimes. I'm so, so sad. I can't believe he just left me like so, ah, Sir, hold on just a... It just can't happen. Oh, sir, hold, hold on just a Poor second. Poor little Timmy. Security! Act professional. Common sense dictates. You shouldn't do anything you wouldn't do in school. Wow, sir, you look absolutely stunning. I know. Dress to impress. Your goal is to give the company a good impression of you. Looking like a hoodlum is not going to get you that job. That boss. <clears throat> I could tell you a few things about him. He was lazy. He was a slacker. He expected so much from all of us employees and never, ever would put in the time. He would use his vacation days every day, but any time it came around for any of the employees to actually go on a vacation, oh, well, no, not for us, I guess. Don't insult anyone, including the people at your last job. Avoid it at all costs, because the interviewer may realize you will do that at his company as well when you are looking for another job. Why did you leave your last job? Well, I did, I accomplished everything I could there, but now I just felt like it was a time for a change. Like I need to start. I was CEO, no need to brag. I was CEO of a multi-billion dollar corporation out in India. Be honest, right, don't so lie. I have your resume up here. Is this the, your most current resume? No, you know, actually, I think I might have it with me. Oh. Sorry, sir, is there a problem? Yeah, I, I don't have it with me. Okay. Um, okay. Bring extra copies of your resume and other important documents you may need. The interviewer will be impressed if you thought ahead and were safe rather than sorry. I have your resume pulled up. Is this your most current resume? Actually, I think I have brought one with me today. Just, just for this case. Okay. Those were some good tips. I learned a lot. What about you? I kind of already knew it with business and you all last oh, that's year, right. you know, I, forgot I took about that, that class. That was a great class. So now let's throw it over to our weather consultant, Parker. What do you have for us this week, Parker? Thanks, guys. This week's weather question comes from Nate. Nate's question is, how long is an average tornado on the ground for? That's a great question, Nate. According to the Storm Prediction Center in Norman, Oklahoma, most tornadoes will last anywhere between 5 to 10 minutes. Sometimes tornadoes can last on the ground for a few seconds to more than an hour. Thanks for the question, Nate. Remember, you can always send me your weather questions via email at pkeezer at myweatherbuzz.com, and they will be answered on the next week's show. Don't forget, you can catch the full weather show on Fridays. The full weather show will have the weekend outlook along with a look at the week ahead. The link will be posted to Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Wyatt and Wyatt, back to you. Thanks, Parker. So if you haven't noticed, Chase, me, some other people on KLKR, we've all been kind of developing these new things. Have you noticed that? Yeah, it's kind of weird that they all kind of happen at the same general time this year. Yeah, so let's go check out some new interesting things that are happening with another member. Just wish I was invisible. 
Whoa, guys, are you getting this? Like, I can't see my hands. It's like I just disappeared or something. Am I, like, invisible? Just imagine all the things I could do now. All the pranks I could pull. You know when you're in space, nobody can hear you scream? Well, yeah, there's no gravity in space. Yeah, exactly! Nice! Yeah! Oh, what's this? Oh, it says don't enter. I, Dude. I don't know what it is, but I, no, I, I would definitely not enter. Hey, you guys can't go in there. See, Connor, I told you you can't go in there. You can't tell me how to live my life. No, you literally can't go in there. That room doesn't exist in this universe. <laughs> Oh, those are some interesting powers. Yeah, I wish I got some cooler powers and... That water shower looked pretty refreshing, though. Yeah, maybe you need one. Oh, thanks. That does it for this episode. Remember, if you have any show ideas or questions, please email us at klkr at hlwwschools.org. Then head over to our Facebook page and YouTube channel to subscribe and give us a like. Don't forget about the contest question. We have some cool prizes for who responds with the correct answer. Again, my name is Wyatt. Mine too. Thanks for watching. Until next time from KLKR. So why do you want this job? <laughs> so why do you want this job? Well, five reasons? Is, is that what you want? <laughs> what? What? So why do you want this job? Yo, dog. So things I want this job is because I just need a new Rottweiler. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I like. I like that. I like, I like that, that as a person. Answer. I like that. I like. Yes. That. You're hired. You're hired now. <laughs> we need more. We like need you. you. <laughs> Join the staff. You're on the team. You're on the team. <laughs> You're gonna need someone to watch me at all times because I might pass out in the toilet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so what would you say is your greatest weakness? Oh, well there, I got something for you. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Yo, dog. Remember you can't lean back that Yo, long. dog, what's up in the hood? Yo. <laughs> Ready? Yeah, homie. Okay. So... <laughs> Shut up, Rick! <laughs> Five hours later. <laughs> okay, let's do this. Alright. <laughs> Word up.